This video presents key operation and servicing information for the new Source 665 Kenmore Elite Ultrawave Microwave Hood Combination. The video corresponds to Sears Service Manual Part Number 223-10901. The model and serial number sticker is located on the lower left corner of the front frame. The 1 and 0 in the model number indicates the year 2001. Topics discussed in this presentation are installation considerations, theory of operation, component access, and diagnosis and testing. Section 1 will review special installation considerations. For a complete step-by-step -step description on how to install the Kenmore Elite Ultrawave Microwave Hood Combination, refer to the installation instructions that are supplied with the microwave. The installation of the Kenmore Elite Ultrawave Microwave Hood Combination is similar to all other Source 665 Microwave Hood Combination units. However, the mounting plate is unique to this model, and other similar mounting plates may not be used. The vent deflector is another component that operates the same as in other units, but is physically different. This completes Section 1. Stop the video now and discuss any questions about the installation. Section 2 will review the theory of operation. Traditional microwave technology is only able to generate microwave energy at full power. In order to reduce the power when cooking, defrosting, or reheating food, the microwave cycles on and off, intermittently heating the food at full power so that the food is still heated with full power, but for less time. This makes it difficult to achieve slow or simmer type cooking. Ultrawave technology has the ability to control the level of microwave energy. When cooking, defrosting, or reheating at reduced power levels, the food receives constant energy that is evenly dispensed, producing true slow or simmer type cooking. The power for the new ultrawave microwave hood combination is produced by 40 watt and 1100 watt inverters. The 40 watt inverter provides 12 volts DC to operate the cooling fan and cavity lights. The 1100 watt inverter replaces the high voltage transformer, capacitor, and diode to provide the necessary power to operate the magnetron. This completes section two. Stop the video now and discuss any questions about the theory of operation. Section 3 will review the component access. The Kenmore Elite Ultrawave Microwave Hood Combination is manufactured with front serviceability. Nearly all components can be accessed without removing the unit from its installation. Most of the components are easily accessible with only the control panel removed. They include the three-door interlock switches, the AC line filter capacitor, the hood fan thermostat, the line fuse, the exhaust motor start capacitor, and the magnetron thermostat. The components that are more difficult to service will be shown in this section of the video. They'll include the cooling fan motor, the 40-watt inverter, the 1100-watt inverter, and the magnetron. To prevent the danger of an electrical shock, disconnect the power before servicing and replace all of the panels before operating the unit. Failure to do so could result in death or electrical shock. To begin, disconnect the power to the microwave. The air grill is held in place by two clips and three locating tabs. To remove the air grill, pull the top forward and unclip it. Then pull the charcoal filter straight out and remove it. To remove the control panel, remove the mounting screw and then lift the side hooks out of their slots in the frame. Disconnect the wires from the control panel. Remove the control panel hinge from the slot in the frame and place it face down on a protected surface. To remove the cooling fan motor, Disconnect the cooling fan motor wire connector from the 40 watt inverter. Push out on the two latching tabs at the top of the fan and then pull the top forward. Before removing any additional components from the microwave, it will first be necessary to discharge the 1100 watt inverter. To do this, 
touch the leads of an insulated 20,000 ohm resistor to the leads of the indicated components for a period of approximately five seconds. Do not use a direct short method to discharge the 1100 watt inverter. It could damage the board. Always use the 20,000 ohm resistor. With the exception of connector CN151, disconnect the wires from the 40 watt inverter board. To remove the 40 watt inverter, push up and release the two top locking tabs from the inverter and then pull the inverter forward. Disconnect the wires from the terminals of the following components. The exhaust motor start capacitor, the magnetron thermostat, and the line fuse. Remove the two mounting screws from the front mounting panel. Turn the front mounting panel 90 degrees and remove it from the unit. Disconnect the two magnetron wires from the 1100 watt inverter. Lift the cover off the 1100 watt inverter and remove it. As a precaution to handling the 1100 watt inverter, make sure that the heat sink is not too hot to touch. Remove the top and bottom screws from the mounting plate of the 1100 watt inverter. Remove the 1100 watt inverter and its mounting plate. Then excluding connector CN701, disconnect the rest of the wires from the inverter. Press the locking arm and disconnect the three wire cable at CN701. To remove the 1100 watt inverter from its holder, remove the two screws and then unclip it. Remove the screw and hex nut from the ground wire. When installing the 1100 watt inverter in the microwave, first install the ground wire, then mount the inverter to its holder. Do not mount the inverter and its holder in the microwave separately. Use the following procedure to remove the magnetron from the unit. Remove the microwave from its installation. Remove the air grill. Remove the charcoal filter. Remove the top, bottom, and rear cabinet screws and remove the cabinet from the microwave. Remove the control panel assembly. Remove the cooling fan. Discharge the 1100 watt inverter. Remove the 40 watt inverter. Remove the front mounting panel. At the top of the unit, Bend the metal locking tab straight up. Slide the rear mounting panel so that the two top locating tabs drop through the chassis cutouts and set the panel on the bottom of the unit. Disconnect the two filament wires from the magnetron. Remove the four mounting screws from the magnetron and remove it from the unit. Since servicing microwave ovens has been reviewed in previous Sears training videos, the components that are similar will not be shown in this section of the video. They include the humidity sensor, cavity thermostat, stirrer motor, hood fan motor, cavity lamp, turntable motor, and hood lamps. This completes section three. Stop the video now and discuss any questions about the component access. Section four will review diagnosis and testing. This section will review how to diagnose problems and test the 1100 watt and 40 watt inverters. Testing the 1100 watt inverter will be necessary whenever a service technician is called to repair a microwave that is not heating. Check the input current of the microwave with an ammeter. Disconnect the power to the microwave. Remove the power cord retaining plate from the cabinet top. Pull the power cord out of the cabinet and separate the three wires. Connect an ammeter clamp around the white power cord wire. Reconnect the power to the microwave. Set the microwave to full power by pressing the add one minute and the start enter keypads on the touch panel. If 15 amps is indicated, the 1100 watt inverter is operating normally. Check the magnetron and its associated wiring. If the meter indicates less than one amp, use the following steps to check for 120 volts AC output from the microcomputer board relay. 
disconnect the power from the microwave. Voltage will be present during the following tests. Do not touch any of the components inside the microwave during these tests. Remove the control panel, but do not disconnect any of the wires. Connect the test leads of an AC voltmeter to the two relay terminals. Reconnect power, press the add one minute, and start enter keypads. The voltmeter should indicate zero volts AC. If 120 volts AC is present at the microcomputer relay, check the control power supply and the line and thermal fuses. Before checking the 1100 watt inverter, disconnect the power to the microwave. The 1100 watt inverter provides high voltage output to the magnetron. Due to the presence of high voltage, do not attempt to repair or make any adjustments to this inverter. Visually inspect inverter connectors CN701, CN702, CN703, and the ground wire for loose connections or discoloration due to overheating. The 40 watt inverter provides 12 volts DC to operate the cooling fan motor and the cavity lights. If the cooling fan motor and cavity lights are not operating, perform the following steps. Disconnect power to the microwave and visually inspect the inverter connectors at CN1, CN151, CN152, and CN153 for loose connections or discoloration due to overheating. If all of the visual checks are normal, perform the following voltage tests on the 40 watt inverter. Reconnect the power to the microwave. Open the oven door. Measure the DC voltage at pins 1 and 2 of connector CN152. The voltmeter should indicate 12 volts DC. Close the oven door. Press the hood light push button on the bottom of the front panel and set the lights to full intensity. Measure the DC voltage at pins 3 and 4 of connector CN152. The voltmeter should indicate 12 volts DC. Press and release the off cancel keypad. Then press and hold the kitchen timer keypad for five seconds. A small D will appear in the display. Press and release the add one minute keypad. Measure the DC voltage at pins one and two of connector CN153. The voltmeter should indicate 12 volts DC. If any of the voltage tests do not indicate the proper readings, replace the 40 watt inverter. This concludes the Sears training video for the Kenmore Elite Ultrawave Microwave Hood Combination. At this time, discuss any questions about the diagnosis and testing.